I'm making a tiny copper feed horn for a 122 gigahertz radio system where the wavelength is 2.4 millimeters. Everything about this stuff is small. The horn screws into the standard couplers that I make to fit the VK3CB transverters. The adjustment thread is M8 by 0.5 millimeters and the head diameter is 8 mil. The central waveguide's ream to 2 millimeters and the horn has a 15 degrees per side flare which is 10 millimeters long so the aperture is 7.35 millimeters. I plan to make the core of this feed horn from C109 tellurium copper because it machines freely and produces short chips and a decent surface finish. Fusion 360 is my weapon of choice for designing mechanical things these days as I'm nearly as bad at drawing as I'm at welding. When I started using Fusion it was a total nightmare. It felt unlike any software tools I'd ever had the misfortune to have to learn. But after a few weeks of total immersion it started to make some sort of sense. I suspect that there's a huge hidden body of secret knowledge somewhere in a remote dungeon with titles like I wouldn't have started that way or no you can't get at that feature from this context, tough. The model's very simple with a set of concentric surfaces. I've isolated the threaded section with a groove to make it easy to cut the thread using a single point tool. As I'm only using Fusion as a way to visualise how this thing looks and to produce drawings for manual machining, I'm not going to get into a silly level of detail. It looks quite pretty in this render. Pity I'm not good enough at machining to make it look like that. Right, now the model's thrown together and looks right, I can generate the dimension drawings in Fusion. I'm rubbish at dimensioning things neatly, as well as drawing antique welding. Luckily there's only me doing the machining on my ancient Colchester 1800, so nobody other than the entire YouTube audience will ever see this awful jankiness. That internal taper is going to be rather challenging to machine, but I have a nifty boring bar that can fit into a 1.7mm hole, so 2mm should be a breeze. I toyed with the idea of grinding a D-bit from high-speed steel or even grinding a taper on a cobalt stub drill, but the Simtek boring bar gives a decent finish and it's mounted already in a quick detached tool holder ready to roll. Right, the drawing's ready to print and I've cut a length of 10mm C109, so let's get machining. Wound the lathe up to 1300 rpm for the finishing pass. This is the 6.5mm diameter step that defines the end stop. Spot drill for the waveguide bore. This is a 1.9mm slow taper extra long drill from Drill Service of Hawley. Hashtag not sponsored. These drills do a brilliant job as deep as 30 times their diameter.
to get the waveguide bore to a really good finish and exact diameter, I'm using a 2mm four flute reamer that's a marvel of tool making. It leaves a fine surface with no visible scores or striations and is worth every penny of the quite a lot of money it cost me. Next job's to machine the 3.98mm OD on the spigot that fits into the 4mm bore of the coupler body. I'm using Joe Pizinski's single point threading technique again with the lathe in reverse and the tool inverted. Time to part it off. So there we have it, first attempt at a straight taper feed horn. The thread could be a lot cleaner and it needs a polish to clean up the OD, then the bore needs a check for any burrs and a polish with brasso on cotton string. I might give the internal taper a polish as well. The lock nut fits well and the thread fits nicely into the coupler. Now we have to see how well it illuminates the subreflector. It certainly looks the part, but as I always say, the RF really doesn't care how pretty the antenna looks.